Hey, I've got a little setup now, you know. I've got a little dumbbell on my tripod so it doesn't fall over. So I can kind of record at this angle safer. Because before it was very hard to um, record like this without the tripod falling over when I was like maneuvering. But I just got back from a, a walk in Malham Cove with a friend. I know from the gym. I had thought to talk about my autism because a lot of people have been asking about it. Um, obviously, they know my story about um, foster care, but they don't know a lot about my autism and how it affects me and how I manage to um, still stay independent and productive um, whilst having it. <coughs> so, what I do is I don't I don't define it as a label. Um, autism isn't a label. Um, I actually. I don't say I have it, I just kind of like, I do have it, but I don't label myself like, oh, I have this, this is so bad, like boohoo. Um, but it's actually Asperger's that I have and not autism. Um, slightly different. Um, autism is more, um, I don't know, more, it's, with actual autism, it's a lot harder to be more independent, but with Asperger's, it's more about the social anxiety, awkwardness and kind of like hyper fixation and very like niche interests um, but I used to deal with a lot of problems with my Asperger's it used to be a big problem to um, get along in life because um, with the social anxiety comes a lot of closed doors um, regarding friendships and opportunities and I've now managed to weaponize my diagnosis of autism into a positive thing where I, I know how it affects me and I know what I can how I can use it to make myself more productive in the day and how I do that is by using my hyper hyper fixation on certain topics and interests to my advantage so before I used to play a lot of video games I used to hyper fixate on these video games um, in a way that I'd research everything about them and try to become better at them as quickly as possible. But now I hyperfixate on more productive things that will get me to where I actually want to be in life, such as um, I can, if I want to edit a video and I definitely want that video to be out, I can spend four or six hours in a row undistracted, just completely focusing on that one thing, pretty much hyperfixating on it until the task is done. I'm no longer spontaneous or distracted as I used to be. And that's another good thing, Asperger's. Um, it, you, need, you need a schedule um, for you to kind of function. Everyone needs a schedule, but for people with Asperger's, it's, it's a lot more prevalent because um, I used to not, I used to run around without a schedule and that was very tough because I, I was very lazy and um, it was very bad for my emotions and I didn't know what was actually wrong. And then when I started to implement schedules into my life, I realized that it was my, my Asperger's desperately begging for me to actually have some sort of routine in my life. So when I implemented routines such as like, like a morning routine or doing something at a certain time, um, that really benefited me. <coughs> Yeah, I'm no longer as spontaneous as I used to be. And another thing is that because of my social anxiety at a young age, um, it's a lot easier to recognize fake friends, I guess you could call them um, nowadays, because you kind of learn to, <clears throat> well, you learn to spot things since you don't make, you don't make friends at an earlier an early stage but I didn't make a lot of friends at an early stage so I kind of had a lot of time to myself and instead of making friends I was kind of in a weird way analyzing friends and analyzing other people's friend groups and I'd be like yeah I definitely don't want to be friends with these guys for example and I'd, I'd, I'd make reasons in my head of why I wouldn't want to be friends with them and that makes it a lot easier nowadays because if someone disrespects me or I don't know, I can sense that they're not truly being authentic when they talk to me. 
I just won't listen to them or I'll just I'll stop speaking to them um, and it means I don't cave into peer pressure as much um, I've been peer pressured to do a lot of things in my life um, like I was peer pressured into losing my virginity I was peer pressured into trying substances I'm not going to go into detail but um, I think that now um, now I've kind of like grown out of that it's it's a lot easier to I don't know because I got I definitely got peer pressure into it but it wasn't a case of showing off it was more of a case of I'm intrigued to do this to know what it's like um, but I don't care about if my friends find me cool or not so peer pressure was prevalent but it's not the main reason why I did some of the things I did growing up um, not all and I'm proud that I can embrace my uniqueness and quirkiness because I used to get judged for that like people make fun of me because I liked Pokemon at the age of 16 and I'd be like okay and what like it doesn't make any difference obviously I don't really play Pokemon or video games much nowadays but I still have a very high ability to memorize and research random things that pique my interest and I think that's something everyone should do you should really have a, a deep interest for something other than your your work because if you don't you kind of just become a monotonous person you really want to have uniqueness in your character characteristic like for example my my interest is that i really like playing guitar i like going to the gym I'm, i like certain certain video game genres um, different types of music for example so yeah just learn try to be more unique um, and you might rediscover yourself if you're currently dealing with identity problems um, in regards to feeling a bit lost um, as for my autism affecting my childhood um, I'll go more into that now but when I was growing up I, I got diagnosed with autism uh, autism slash Asperger's at the age of 9 wait not 9 no 7 7 that was it and the way I, I didn't even realise I had been diagnosed with it at first because <clears throat> all I remember was going to some like dingy like some dingy room and getting asked loads of questions and it was one day um, I think I was in elementary school uh, primary school and um, the teacher the teacher took me and a select group of kids on a trip and um, under my name she wrote ASD which stands for autism autism spectrum disorder I think something like that and I saw that under my name and I asked my foster carer on the way back in the car I asked her what does ASD mean and she said um, oh that means you have autism didn't anyone tell you and I was like no no one's ever told me I have autism what is it and I was like panicking and they were just saying oh it just means you're a little bit more special and unique than other people or something like that or I don't know some, some along those lines but they said they explained it as a superpower which is a I guess can be taken that way if you want to um, I still wouldn't want to change me I wouldn't want to not have autism because it, it, I feel really fulfilled currently in who I am um, yeah so growing up I, I got diagnosed at 7 but didn't really even find out I had it until 9 or 10 and once I found that out at 9 and 10 I researched more in my own time and a lot of the things that happened growing up made more sense so um, social social interactions in primary school or being extremely awkward in such situations or being embarrassed in the spotlight those sort of um, 
things. I, like, I hated being at the front of the class or the centre of attention. I think it that's something that most people. It's just like a common, a common like um, thing people don't like that, but um, it's a lot more prevalent and uh, widespread with people with um, on the autistic spectrum. So yeah, things started to become a lot more clear to why they were happen happening to me. Um, but yeah, growing up it was very hard to make friends and if I'd made friends, um, the connections wouldn't really last because I'd either grow too dependent or I'd become like too comfortable and relaxed around my friends to the point where I become a bit of a, like a like an idiot or like a loser. Um, <laughs> is a harsh way of putting it so obviously I'd, I'd want to be around a circle of friends that I felt comfortable in because I felt like I couldn't make any more friends so when you kind of rely on them and your friends can sense that they kind of like they kind of like lose respect for you and like not like a like a, a weird way but like just subconsciously happens so you kind of lose respect for you and that happened in high school a lot. I fell out with a lot of friends and left a lot of friend groups because um, I was just like a, an awkward, weird kid who couldn't really um, talk outside of school because I was in foster care and I didn't have a phone. And the only time I could really contact my friends was when I was at the playground and I was able to talk to them in person. And it just didn't really feel, feel, feel like I fit in. But I'm still, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm grateful for um, the autism. I don't label it as a a condition or something to be ashamed of. So I'm glad that happened. But yeah, I just thought I'd go over that really quickly. Um, I'm at the gym now, so I have to park up. But I'm really glad you guys enjoyed it. Well, hopefully you enjoyed it. And it's a little bit more to me, a little bit more information about my own personal life. Um, I'm going to keep these daily uploads coming. So just keep an eye out for those and then I'm going to try and do one full guide a week if possible. So cheers.